Welcome back to another Wrath Classic tier list where today we will break down the melee meta in Season 5. We will be covering every spec in the game, including our experts' predictions on the top 3 melee in the early expansion. And trust us, Wrath isn't like Shadowlands. If you think Fury Warriors will be sitting with the high tiers, think again. Honestly though, there are so many differences between every expansion which can make it frustrating to learn a new meta. To make your learning experience easier, Skillcap now offers guides for both classic and retail, all under one subscription. This video along with everything we make comes directly from Rank 1 Gladiators and Tournament Pros, and every week we spend hours consulting with the best players to deliver the highest quality instructional PvP content. We're so confident in your results that we even offer a rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount. Anyway, virtually every melee has a place in the meta, but the following three specs are clearly a cut above the rest. Arms Warriors undeniably deserve a spot on the S tier, despite actually being their weakest in Season 5. Yes, that's right, Warriors will age like fine wine over the course of Wrath, especially once Armor Pen becomes more widely available. But if Warriors are at their worst in Season 5, how come they're on the S tier? Well, even though their damage isn't nearly as threatening, their pressure is still insanely high. Mortal Strike as a baseline 50% healing reduction combined with Unrelenting Assault can mean up to 75% reduced healing on a single target. This gives them quite a bit of flexibility in 3v3, but also gives them their title as the King of 2v2, where Holy Paladin Warrior is arguably the most oppressive comp the entire expansion. So yeah, even though they are technically at their worst, don't sleep on Warriors in Season 5. On the other side of melee, Sub Rogues face the opposite problem if you want to call it that. Yes, Sub will actually be at its best in Season 5, but will gradually drop off as the seasons progress. But what makes it so good early on? Well, a lot of it is simply the result of lower stamina and resilience values, which makes ambush damage disproportionately high in the early expansion, and turns rogues into one of the most bursty melee classes. Now, of course, rogues are squishy and can melt easily in 3v3 arena, but since games will be so short and explosive anyway, this weakness is quite manageable, especially with preparation to reset most major cooldowns. With a top tier comp in both 2v2 and 3v3, you really can't go wrong with playing Rogue in Season 5, which is why they earn their spot in the high tiers. Finally, we have our third dominant melee, Unholy DK. Just like the Sub Rogues, they will be at their peak in the early expansion. This has a lot to do with the role they play in Arena, which is to simply do enough consistent pressure to oom the enemy healer. Even though they lack a mortal strike effect, they easily compensate in the damage department with a slew of undispellable diseases combined with spam snares, practically ensuring high uptime. This will be super taxing for any healer since MP5 values aren't high enough in Season 5 to carry games beyond a few minutes, if that. Of course, this problem will go away eventually with better gear, especially when the beloved Solace of the Fallen is equipped on every healer in the game. And once healer mana becomes bulkier than Bajira after a workout, Unholy DKs will fall off slightly, though will still be highly competitive for the remainder of the expansion, especially in 2v2 where they will be the bane of any double DPS team. And with that, we have our most dominant melee in Season 5. Each one of these specs will have access to at least one top tier comp in either 2v2 or 3v3, and we anticipate that these will be some of the most popular melee on the high end of the ladder. But now is the critical moment where we cover the rest of the high tiers, with three more specs that will be highly competitive. First up, we have Rhett Paladin, and for clarity's sake, this means both one-handed and two-handed versions. One unique feature of Wrath Rhett Paladin is that they have a defensive magic dispel, which is arguably the strongest utility in the game. It does not end there, however, as Rhett's also come equipped with two major team-wide defensives in the form of Divine Sacrifice and Hand of Protection. But I'm sure you already knew this, so why does it matter? Well, with the popularity of highly aggressive comps like Beast Cleave in Season 5, having a Paladin on your team is practically a second lifeline. Not to mention that Rep Paladins typically play with Priests and Arena, meaning there can be two spammable magic dispels on the same team. This can help keep CC heavy comps like RMP in check, which again will be super important since they will be at their peak performance early expansion. The only reason Rep Paladins aren't higher on our list is because they lack an interrupt and healing reduction effect, meaning they are more reliant on other classes rather than being solid on their own. The same is true for our next A tier melee, Feral Druid. As we've mentioned in other videos, Feral is a jack of all trades but master of none, able to deal a ton of physical damage with incredible CC, but just lacking the bulk to truly flourish as a melee DPS. Their squishiness means they have fairly limited comp options. Although something like Kitty Cleave might look good on paper, Ferals would simply get tunneled in a comp like that, and instead rely more on playing with hunters or mages who either get trained themselves or give the Feral breathing room with peels and snares. One key contribution in Season 5 will be Innervate. Again, here 
healer mana will be a glaring issue in early expansion, so having an on-demand way to return some resources is immensely helpful. In any case, expect to see moderate representation from Feral and Arena, especially 2v2, where their damage will be a massive execution test for any healer. Next up, we have Assassination Rogue. While they were wildly popular in Original Wrath, they are slightly outdated for the modern meta, but still are highly competitive in Season 5. Unlike Subtlety, Assassination Rogues are designed to deal more consistent damage while also setting up kills around Kidney Shot. Some perks of playing Asa include 20% increased healing taken thanks to the Quick Recovery passive, as well as some Poison Dispel protection partially due to Deadly Brew. Unfortunately, these are offset by the fact that Assassination lacks a Gap Closer, and without Shadow Step will find itself waddling around the arena. And in an expansion where mobility is limited, this drawback is quite punishing, but their damage can be enough to overwhelm many healers. And speaking of testing healers, we have the final melee in our A tier, Enhancement Shaman. Just like many of the specs we've mentioned, Enhance will be at its peak during Season 5. The reason for this? Feral Spirits. Of course, this cooldown will remain strong all expansion, but remember that pets don't really scale well with gear, as Bonus Haste, Crit, or Armor Pen doesn't affect their damage. Instead, all pet classes, which includes Enhancement, will benefit the most from the early expansion where baseline pet damage is at its highest. When you pair that with the fact that players have less health and resilience, an overbudgeted cooldown like Feral Spirit makes Enhance a deadly foe in Season 5. And with that, we're at the end of the high tiers for melee DPS. One key point of separation between some of these classes and the S tier melee is that they either lack an MS effect, an interrupt, or just have poor mobility. Now, this doesn't make them bad, but simply means they're more reliant on other specs to provide these effects, especially in 3v3. And with our high tiers sorted, let's wrap things up with our mid and low tiers. Some of these will tiptoe on the edge of viability in Arena, but our B tier includes specs which are good, but have very limited comp options. First up on the B tier, we have Frost Death Knights. Even though they are significantly less common than their unholy counterparts, they are still quite viable in Arena. Frost offers one of the most unique CC tools in the game with Hungering Cold, which lines up perfectly with Unbreakable Armor to give them a potent damage setup. Of course, they are lacking some functionality, most notably the fact that their pet cannot be controlled, which gives them one less micro CC compared to Unholy. Frost will peak in the early expansion, but will fall off later on, especially when Shadow Morn becomes available due to the fact that Frost plays exclusively with one-handed weapons. Until then, it will be a decent off-meta pick for Wrath Arena. Finally, since many of you will be asking questions about them, both prot specs will fall into the B tier. For now, let's focus on Warriors since they are the more popular of the two. Just like ARMS, Prot Warrior will scale significantly better with more powerful gear in the later seasons. That is primarily due to Shield Slam scaling off of block value, which of course will be at its lowest in Season 5. So once better shields become available and when armor penetration is more widely accessible on gear, Prot Warriors will become more potent. Until then, they will be at their weakest early expansion. And here we have our complete mid and low tiers. You might be wondering why Fury is so low. Ironically, it does have a passive MS effect with Furious attacks, but this isn't enough to offset the problem that it is super squishy by itself, and unlike ARMS, is unable to do much damage while getting trained, and of course lacks the meta-defining, unrelenting assault talent which limits its utility. Overall though, each melee class has at least one spec that is high tier, and due to healing reduction effects or unique utility, all melee play a vital role in defining the meta throughout Wrath of the Lich King. Anything within the high tiers is fully capable of rank 1, while anything in the mid tier is definitely suited for Gladiator in Season 5. The low tier is a bit of a wild card, and we generally don't recommend them for any serious arena. But no matter what journey you take in Wrath Classic, we have you covered at skillcap.com. Right now, we have hundreds of videos, including class courses and arena commentaries, instantly available at your fingertips. One subscription gets you access to Wrath Classic and Retail WoW, allowing you to stay ahead of the competition no matter what expansion you play. Take advantage of our rating game guarantee and visit the link below for an exclusive discount offer. Alright guys, we hope you learned something useful about the melee meta in Season 5. Give us your prediction in the comments below as to what melee you think will be the most dominant in the early expansion. In any case, thank you all for watching. See you soon.